Good afternoon. We are Phoenix Advisory. My name is Sabrina Ramos, and this is my co-president, Connor Dwyer. We are here to inform you all of our recommended legislation regarding gender quotas for corporate employees. First, we'll be going over the, first we'll be providing you all with an overview, and then identifying the stakeholders, our response spectrum, which are the various plans we have evaluated, and then the legal, ethical, and financial considerations, which contribute to our recommended legislation abbreviated as power. And then to provide a situational overview, we are looking at California Senate Bill 823. California Senate Bill 823 was signed by Governor Brown on September 30th, 2018, making California the first state to mandate federally mandated boards of directors in regards to gender representation. Some questions exist, do some questions do exist regarding the legality and its correlation to higher performance. Some individuals feel the bill is an effective way to eliminate groupthink, but also some believe that the correlation cannot apply causality. This brings us to our central question, which is how can we, Phoenix Advisory, create legislation where we find the right balance between opening up opportunities for women in the workplace while not intruding on a business's autonomy and their desire to hire the best qualified candidate regardless of their gender identity. When answering our central question, we have identified four key issues. The first being that the recommended legislation does not infringe on fair and just hiring processes of an organization. The second being the constitutionality regarding the 14th Amendment. And then the third is associated costs for time to hire for organizations. And lastly, the effectiveness of laws implementation. And there are various studies like McKinsey and Credit Suisse who attribute a positive correlation to gender representation and performance. <coughs> while others deny that causation. And we have identified our stakeholders internally and externally. Connor and I have conducted a stakeholder analysis with influence and interest. In red are our external stakeholders, the first one being headquartered companies in Pennsylvania, and they will be directly affected by any legislation implemented. And if too aggressive, they most likely will be Pennsylvania, thus eliminating viable jobs within the state. After that are women applicants and then executive search firms. In yellow are our internal stakeholders, which are Pennsylvania Assembly, Governor Wolf, the Pennsylvania Senate, and House of Representatives, and the Department of Labor. Our response spectrum detailed three different potential plans of action in regards to addressing the gender gap that exists today. We have three different plans. On the far left is our inaction plan, which is implementing no legislation, thus having no initiative to address the growing gender gap for boards of directors in Pennsylvania. On the far right is the opposite end of the spectrum, which is forced integration, establishing quotas immediately. Sabrina and I concluded this would be labeled as unconstitutional and also in many cases put individuals in a position simply to meet a quota where they do not have the knowledge, skills, and abilities or experience to succeed at that said position. In the middle, we have our partnership, which when we implement this piece of legislation, we want to create a partnership between the government of Pennsylvania and the various companies, focusing on career development and opportunities for women through various reinforcements. For our ethical considerations, we divide it into two, one being a company's desire to hire. Companies desire to hire the best candidate that follows the person job fit, knowledge, skills, and abilities, and person organization fit, fitting in the company culture. This is an incredibly expensive and timely process to do correctly for different firms. However, when done correctly and when done well over time, the initial investment is very much worth it, correlating to higher performance over time. Equal opportunities for all starts off with applicants feeling that they will be legitimately considered for the position. Also, that the applicants are not placed into this position solely based on their gender identity, but for their knowledge, skills, and abilities, and potential to succeed in completing the trades, duties, and responsibilities in that position. Also, there is a glass ceiling, and implementing a form of legislation is a step towards breaking that, providing women the, with the same opportunities as men, which is much overdue. And finally, this can help alter company culture by increasing inclusivity, career development opportunities, cognitive uh, variety, as well as the ability to develop high performance work practices. Financially, our main consideration was the cost of executive recruiting, which we divide into three separate costs. The first one being the physical hiring of the executive search firm to complete the search. The next one being the cost to a company of having that open board seat. Last being type one error, identifying an individual as an A player, when in reality they are not the A player for that position. Our approximation in regards to the fee structure for the executive search firms is that it does vary from client to client, firm to firm, but we 
determined that it averages to be about 30 to 35% of the client that was placed first year's salary, which can be paid over time. Fortunately for us here in Pennsylvania, three, Forbes identified three of the top 10 firms for executive search firms are headquartered right here in state. Legal considerations include the Equal Protection Clause and files, files given to the Equal Employment Opportunities Commission. The Equal Protection Clause states that individuals need to be treated in, a, in the same manner as others in similar circumstances or situations. And if that is challenged, intermediate scrutiny is the plan of action. So that is when, tests, that is when courts conduct tests to determine the statute's constitutionality in regards to gender classification. On the company perspective, if an individual files a discrimination claim to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, businesses are businesses have three forms of offense, then being undue hardship, business necessity, or modified occupation qualifications. So taking everything into consideration, Connor and I have developed a legislation abbreviated as POWER, Pennsylvania Opportunities for Women in Enterprises Regulation. We believe that power will not only address the growing gender gap today, but also assure growth opportunities for women in the workplace for the next seven generations. Immediately, we plan to implement that all publicly held corporations with executive offices here in Pennsylvania must have at least one woman director by the end of 2020. For the future, we will be acting on a moving average. By the end of 2023, the same companies must have the following moving average in regards to the female representation on their board of directors. One if four members, two if five, three if six to 10, four if 11 plus. We chose these numbers because we feel that it accounts for not only the large firms that exist in Pennsylvania, but the small to medium sized firms that would be growing and adding more members to their board of directors, assuring that they will continue to have these opportunities for women. Also in place in power is a reevaluation clause at the begin beginning of 2024. We plan to analyze the gender diversity depth, see where improvement has happened, and how power can take place. Our first reinforcement is positive. There will be a 15% property tax discount, and there will be, this will be rewarding the companies for meeting our requirements and also incentivizes them to remain in Pennsylvania. Our negative reinforcement is based on non-compliance. There are three levels of fines, the first being $70,000, the second $100,000, and the third $350,000. And this allows for the various sizing of the companies as well as considering time to hire. Our justification includes that this allows for time to conduct efficient hiring practices as well as creating a collaborative partnership and accounts for Pennsylvania's a lower cost of living compared to California. Power also includes annual reporting, the first being gender diversity data and that will include at the board of directors, top management, and managers overall, including their overall pay, as well as allowing for transparency within the organizations. Then is the objectives and initiatives towards completing our requirements and progress accountability. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.